Germany sees possible Russian raid on its territory. Russian President Vladimir Putin is prepared to attack Germany as part of an invasion that could last years and trigger full-scale conflict with NATO, according to a just-released government report delivered to Germany lawmakers in the Bundestag. The Washington Times reported this. It is noted that the civil defense risk analysis outlines scenarios between an unnamed aggressor and NATO and is based on lessons learned from Russia's war against Ukraine now in its third year. The 14-page report comes after German Defense Minister Boris Pistorius warned that Russia could attack NATO in five to eight years and as the Allies take part in the biggest joint military drills in Eastern Europe since the Cold War. As it stands, Germany may be the second biggest contributor of military aid to Ukraine after the US, but it can no longer credibly claim to offer any form of leadership. That Germany is struggling to set its own house in order, leaving it, neither the will nor the authority to lead on European security, is clear for all to see, including Vladimir Putin. Meanwhile, the hard right alternative for Deutschland and a new party under the direction of left winger Sarah Wagenknecht both advocate negotiations with Russia. The survival of his fragile coalition is a priority for Chancellor Olaf Scholz over security policy. This lack of German leadership is a tragedy for Ukraine and for the West. U.S. military warns of environmental disaster after spill in Red Sea caused by Houthi attacks. U.S. CENTCOM has warned of an environmental disaster following an attack by Yemen's Houthis on a cargo ship that caused an oil slick in the Red Sea. On the 18th of February, the Houthis targeted a U.K.-owned bulk carrier named Rubimar, flagged by Belize. The ship was sailing through the Bab al-Mandeb Strait, connecting the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden en route to Bulgaria from Khor Fakan in the United Arab Emirates when it was attacked by multiple missiles. The Rubimar, a Belize-flagged but British-owned bulk carrier, has been drifting in the Red Sea after it was struck by two missiles. The ship, which is feared to be in danger of sinking, is leaking an 18-mile oil spill and carrying 41,000 tons of volatile fertilizer. The 22nd of February attack on the Rubimar inflicted the most significant damage so far on a commercial ship since the Houthis started targeting vessels in November. The Houthis say their attacks on commercial shipping in the Red Sea are in solidarity with the stricken people of Gaza. CENTCOM posted on X that the unprovoked and reckless attack by Iran-backed Houthi terrorists caused significant damage to the ship, which caused an 18-mile oil slick. It has long been feared that the Houthis might extend their actions by disrupting internet traffic and cutting sea cables. Sixteen small fiber optic lines across the bed of the Red Sea carry about 17% of all international data traffic including trunk lines connecting Europe with India and East Asia. It was reported on Monday that cables belonging to four big telecom networks, including the Asia-Africa Europe 1, TGN Atlantic, Europe India Gateway and the Seacom system, have been damaged in recent months. The cause of the damage has not been identified and natural damage happens relatively regularly. Israeli media reports attributed the damage to Houthi actions, but Yemen's Houthi-controlled communications ministry denied involvement. <laughs> Colombian soldiers replace fighting drug cartels with a war on Putin. The sound of Colombian Spanish fills a hospital treating soldiers wounded fighting Russian forces, according to The Independent. Ukraine's ranks are depleted by two years of war. As it battles Putin's war machine, Ukraine is welcoming hardened fighters from one of the world's longest-running conflicts. Professional soldiers from Colombia bolster the ranks of volunteers from around the world who have answered Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's call for foreign fighters to join his nation's war with Russia. Colombia's military has been fighting drug trafficking cartels and rebel groups for decades, making its soldiers some of the world's most experienced. With a military of 250,000, Colombia has Latin America's second largest army after Brazil's. 
More than 10,000 retire each year, and hundreds are heading to fight in Ukraine, where many make four times as much as experienced, non-commissioned officers earn in Colombia or even more. Colombia has a large army with highly trained personnel, but the pay isn't great when you compare it to other militaries, says Andre Macias of Bogotá's Externando University, who studies Colombian work for military contractors around the world. Retired Colombian soldiers began to head overseas in the early 2000s to work for U.S. military contractors protecting infrastructure, including oil wells in Iraq. Retired members of Colombia's military have also been hired as trainers in the United Arab Emirates and joined in Yemen's battle against Iran-backed Houthi rebels.